Good morning, everybody. I wanted to give you an update on Iceland in the late afternoon on Saturday, March 2nd in Eastern time. There was a swarm of earthquakes. You can see the live view currently, a live from Iceland YouTube channel, the multi view. I've been watching it closely over the last 36 hours. And you can see in the last four hours, there are no quakes. There were a few quakes. Uh, about 12 hours ago, like three, but that's, you know, typical, just minor activity. But you can see on the screen on Saturday afternoon, March 2nd, Eastern time, you can see a large uh, swarm, a large swarm of earthquakes. Uh, at that time, there's about 166 earthquakes. You can see the depths here, five kilometers, one kilometer, you know, seven kilometers, some shallow, but mostly they were deeper earthquakes. I don't want to give updates and sort of real time all the time because I don't want to spread any fear about what's happening or misinformation. I'm delayed, you know, sending an update straight away because this information can be critical to the people there and they should be following like the Meteorological Office of Iceland and their news and information coming from the professionals in Iceland. And so I wanted to give this update a little bit delayed to educate people and tell people what's happening. So these earthquakes are deeper, and that means that there was a magma intrusion from very deep underground, the source of the magma, coming up, but it was not breaking the surface of the ground. It was intruding into existing fractures, into existing pathways, creating new pathways because we see lots of seismic activity and but it was relatively deep so it's expanding the network of fractures around this sort of magma body that is underground and it needs to build up pressure in that underground chamber or area in order to extrude and propagate those cracks to surface and so if we look at the meteorological office update from March 3rd, lunchtime local time in Iceland, we can see that the seismic activity decreased after about four hours approximately, and they continue to do model calculations. So if we look at this here, I'll zoom in so you can see it well, you can see the red line here is the existing model projections of the magma volume since the days uh, it started to inflate. So at the end of the last eruption, let's see the yellow one here, the star February 9th. All right, we had the last eruption. And then inflation calculations, you know, start again. And so this red line is the one we're currently following. You can see a drop here. So the ground rose up. We had lots of earthquakes happening underground, deep down, kilometers below the ground. Magma's filling into new space, all right? Those earthquakes are creating new space, new fractures, and the magma, you know, filled up, and then all that new cracking created space, which actually decreased then the inflation, all right? Because that pressure that built up was able to decrease it because of the new space that was created. So that's what's happened in Iceland. I just want to give a quick update to let people know. And, you know, we can expect this is going to continue. Uh, we've had now, you know, four eruptions on surface. And, you know, I expect the continued inflation to, uh, you know, start again when the magma starts to accumulate again in this underground chamber magma chamber that is there and eventually you know it could erupt again but we need to follow many different signs we need to look at the earthquakes we need to look at where they're occurring we look at these inflation values these are model values we look at the gps data these are all factors that we put together the professionals from the met office in iceland they will give the news updates that the local people should be following closely so thanks for watching and, uh, you know, I'll try to continue to give updates more from an educational perspective so you understand what's happening there. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now.